Hello friends and welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today I have a little bit of maintenance to do on several of my containers here at the nursery and I thought it would be really helpful for you to come along with me as I do just basic maintenance on all of these different types of containers that we have. Here we are, end of June, really soon going into July and if you're like us in North Carolina and you have a really long growing season, maybe you planted your containers like in April so we're a couple of months in now is the perfect time probably that your containers are going to need a little attention if you haven't been kind of maintaining them throughout the growing season and I know that can be very daunting especially if you're a new gardener and you're afraid that you're going to hurt a plant or you're going to prune too much or what should I do how do I maintain it if I run into problems what do I do Again, I thought it would be really helpful for you just to kind of join me as I go from container to container here at the nursery and assess each container. I will tell you what I'm looking at, what my thought process is, and then if there's an issue, how I'm gonna fix it. So what we're gonna look at first is the fantastic water trough here um, in front of the barn. If you will remember, we planted this, uh, earlier we'll just say that on all of them they were earlier i will link that video for you but the vast majority of the plants in here are going to be the new introductions for 2023 from proven winners um, you can see that the climbing sweet potato vines yes they really do climb um, just look how fun that is there are four in there uh, looking back i probably could have only done two but you know what it's a test year just go for it portulaca is gorgeous the coleus um, but some of my problems okay my portulaca is overtaking my new mini vista reds so we've got to get that taken care of um, i need to come in and trim out some of this right here so that the watermelon coleus will be happy as will be the caladiums then coleus i need to prune that back it's getting a little tall i want to make sure it stays nice and tight and compact so what we're going to do is um, just set the camera up and i'm going to show you step by step what i'm doing and again my reasoning behind it all okay so here we go um, i've got my handy dandy garden belt i know i've talked about this before when i first got it i have had you know multiple days of experience with it i love this thing it makes life so nice because i can have all of my tools right here on my hip and it, it doesn't pull down my pants or my shorts or whatever and I can fit a whole lot of stuff in here. I'll link it where we got it from. We're not affiliated with them whatsoever. It's just, it's a great product and we really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. It's fantastic. Now, when you're going to do this on your guard like on your containers you need to just go ahead and get all your supplies together so i've got my black tub here i've got a watering can i've got slow release fertilizer water soluble fertilizer slug and snail bait just bring like all your tools that you know that you might need because that way it just saves you and you're not running around like a crazy person um you know oh i need to go get this oh i need to go get that just have all your tools together if you have a wheelbarrow throw everything in the wheelbarrow and just roll it around um the garden so first things first my coleus now coleus is obviously a fantastic plant it the color blaze will do sun or shade and um, gets really nice and tall and it doesn't go to flower as quickly you want your coleus to be nice and stout and thick and not grow straight up because if it grows straight up and you get a windstorm it could just lay down so every once in a while you want to go through and pinch it back so what I did is I just took off a nice little hunk of the Wicked Witch. So when you have your main stem, right, and you've got two branches right here, what you want to do is get your clippers and come right above that, snip it, and clip it out. Now these will become nice, thick, sturdy branches. So that is what I am doing. That gives you just kind of an up close and, and personal view of it. Depending on um, how often you do it, will de kind of depend on how severe you need to prune it back if you do it more often you can just take the little teeny tiny tops out and it will still accomplish what you need to do if you do it more spread apart then you might need to go a little bit more severe so that's just a thought so this is the wicked witch here is the 
brand new. This is the watermelon and it's a mini. It's gonna be a little short um, coleus, really fun. So we're getting in here and I'm not being precise on this one at all because it's so um, frilly. The edges are so frilly, it's kind of hard to see. All right, so I got my wire vine. It's doing great. Now, my portulaca is kind of, she's getting a little vigorous here. So I'm gonna come in and again, you can be very precise if you like. I'm not gonna be. I'm just gonna come in and I'm trimming this part in the back. I want this to come forward, not so much to the back where it's gonna kind of smother out my other plants. Now, I know that um, I kind of overplanted this container. So if you, sweet potato vine. Oh, wow, where did you come from? Let's see. And that is the thing about, <laughs> about the climbing sweet potato vine is that of course it will go everywhere. Let's see who you're connected to. Oh, back here. Yep, yeah, we're gonna take you out there, sister. All right, there we go. Um, it was planted nice and thick and full, which requires when you do that a little bit more maintenance. So when you're trimming back, you can be nice and precise like I was with the coleus, right? You can go above those two leaves, trim it, and then they'll branch out. Or in cases like this, you can just go for it and um, just whack it. Give it a good haircut. It will get nice and thick and um, you want to do this every so often when the plants are encroaching on other plants because if you don't, the most vigorous plant is going to get all the sun. And for plants, sun equals food and energy. And if this portulaca will continue to grow in the back, it's going to smother out my caladiums and my watermelon. They're not going to get the sunlight and they're going to suffer. They're going to be very weak and suffer. So that's, that's a pretty good start, I think. Um, and it, with when you're trimming, a lot of this is going to be by sight. What looks good to you? Um, there's not, you know, a too much or a too little. What looks good to you and go for it that way. Um, okay, now, <laughs> the climbing sweet potato vine is definitely climbing. Um, I do have an obelisk under here. If you will remember when we planted this, it's a nice um, cylindrical obelisk. And there's two of the lime green potato vines and there's two of the black. I will put the exact names up for you because I don't remember right now. So I have two options. I can either cut this sweet potato vine or what I'm gonna try to do is stuff it in the obelisk so that it will attach and grow up and not so much down into my other plants. See, and so now you can see and the mini vista reds, and I know that's not the exact same name. I'll put again the right name up there, but in my head, they're mini vista reds. Um, this will get more sunlight and then they can grow. So we're just gonna tuck this in here. With your sweet potato vine, do not be afraid to trim it. It can handle a good haircut. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna do anything to my caladiums. I'm gonna let them go. I like that the queen tut is kind of intermingling in here. She'll be just fine. It gives it a, a nice little whimsy and a look to it. So what I'm gonna do is do the exact same thing on the other side and then this container will be done. I don't need to fertilize because it's been, it was planted later. So it's good on fertilizer and um, no slug damage. So we're good on that. So we're gonna do a little trimming and then we'll move on to the next one.
So this container is done. See, easy peasy. It takes about maybe five to 10 minutes um, if there's not any major issues in that container and then you just move on to the next one. So what we're gonna do is go into the shade and hit the pergola at the aqua pots. I know I've got to trim some jazzberries because I have a feeling they're out of control. Uh, so yeah, so we're gonna move up to the pergola and the aqua pots. Okay, so here we are at the aqua pots and they are full and they are beautiful and they are certainly a spectacular sight to be seen. Remember we have Prince Tut as our thriller. We have Supertunia Vista Jazzberry, which is the new Vista this year. We have the Purple Queen. We are, this is a test uh, for us, we're testing it. It will be a new introduction next year. So that's doing great. and. <laughs> And then for me, the most obvious issue that needs to be taken care of is there are um, some white impatience in here, which you clearly cannot see because of the jazzberry and so forth that is going on. So I want to come in here and try to give them um, some more light. And again, this maybe this is a design thing. Maybe um, the impatience can't grow fast enough to keep up with the Prince Tut and the Jazzberry. So maybe that was, for me as the designer of this container, um, a flaw. And so what I do, okay, so there are no mistakes in gardening. Um, the only mistake would be is if you don't learn from it. So next year I'd be like, okay, or in the future, know that I can't put the uh, impatience with this stuff because they just don't have the same growth rate. So you live and you learn. Um, so we're gonna trim up the jazzberry back here in the back, just very lightly. So hopefully some light will get in um, onto the impatience because the impatience are between the jazzberry and the Prince Tut. And then we're gonna clean up the bottom some and just do a very light haircut. One thing that I have learned with these aqua pots, for whatever reason, and I'm not saying it's an aqua pot issue, it's a location issue, because this is the only place that it really happens, is that especially as we get into the summer months and it gets even more hot and more humid consistently here in North Carolina, um, I will have snails and slugs crawl up the pot to eat the plants inside of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and be, again, preventative and use some of the slug and snail bait this is, um, tons of different manufacturers make it. Um, this is one that I just get off of Amazon. Um, Amazon seems to be one of my best friends these days because I can just go and order it and it comes straight to my house. It's great. But um, I know that, again, multiple companies make it. So you're just going to type in or go to your local garden center or, a, you know, a hardware store somewhere that sells amendments like this right and it's slug and snail bait it is an organic solution it is um, safe to use with flowers and vegetables and pets and things like that um, it's little granules and basically it is it is a bait for the snails and slugs they eat it and then it destroys their digestive system and they die um, it's a very lovely process so you just take it and you sprinkle it, just follow the directions on the package, but this is very, very effective in controlling snails and slugs in your garden, whether it's in a container or the landscape. So um, let's get to pruning these jazzberries. So right in here is where the um, impatients are. And we're just, I'm even gonna take out some of the, the purple queen and I'm just dumping them into my container. Now, depending on how, um, Severe you want to be, that's your choice. You can be pretty severe. Petunias bloom on new growth. They like to be pruned. I actually encourage you to prune them, um, especially if you've got hanging baskets. That is a definite must. If they start to look, like even in this container, later on in the season, if I have zero blooms up here and it starts to look really thin and what I call naked, and then down here, all the action and the flowers are down there at the bottom, then you need to come in and prune it because all the new growth is happening down there at the bottom and you wanna come in to the top and rejuvenate the plant, right? Um, again, if you want to be very precise and you know where you're making your cuts, you absolutely can. <laughs> I am not. I am just going in and going, oh, yep, nope, I need some more light in here. So you are gonna get a haircut. Um, 
And if you do this on a somewhat regular basis, I have already done this, um, I know once, maybe twice in here, it will definitely keep the plants nice and thick and happy. Again, it'll be interesting because I'm not gonna trim back Prince Tut because I just wanted to let it go. Um, I may have just planted these in patience. Maybe that's just a bad choice again because they're so close. I don't know where they're gonna get the sun. We're gonna see what happens. So up here, I'm fine. I'm just gonna kind of leave everything where it is um, as far as I'm not gonna prune anymore. And you can be, again, as precise or low key about it as you want. What we are gonna do is come in and trim up the bottom so that way it keeps all the action up here and not just down here at the bottom. So let me show you how I'm gonna do that. All right, so it's very simple. You're just gonna come in here and grab a handful of the petunia and you're gonna cut. Like this is really long, so we're cutting that off. Um, again, you just want to keep it nice and, and thick and encourage the plant to grow more because as it grows you get blooms and we want all the bloomy blooms that we can possibly have in here because here we are end of june going into july and if you properly maintain this container it will go all the way through the fall so we certainly want to do that and keep this very happy and um, growing I'll say today is um, a really nice day. You'll notice I'm not wearing my sun hat because, well, one, it's supposed to be cloudy all day, but you can see that some of the sun is out. Um, we had a big storm come through yesterday, last night, and it was nice and cool today. It feels fantastic. I know a couple of y'all have commented that you can hear Brenna panting on, the, um, <laughs> on my mic. And my response to that is twofold. One, that gives you an idea of how close this dog is always to me. She never goes very far. She's always right by my side. She likes to be next to her mama. Um, and don't worry, I promise she has plenty of water. She knows where her water sources are. She goes, when she gets hot, she goes and she plays in the creek and comes back soaking wet. Um, so Brenna is A-OK. -okay. She is a German Shepherd living in North Carolina summers. So we'll just leave it at that. Um, but y'all have been very sweet about her and I know that she can be quite entertaining on some of these videos in the background. Um, she is definitely a garden dog. She loves to be outside with me gardening. And if it's not a day that we're out in the garden, man, she lets me know about it. All right, so we're just going in in there and trimming it up. And we're gonna to go to the next one and do the same thing on that one. And I will show you how I apply the um, slug and snail bait. open up my bag um, for my snail and slug bait and this is the um, Omri listed OMRI organic listed so it is safe to use in lots of different applications but be sure and just look on the bag for your exact directions the hardest part about this whole thing <laughs> is getting the bag open so in my tool belt I have my trusty 
trusty uh, flex blade here, flex cutter. So again, love this belt. All right, so it is pelleted. This just says to you're taking it and you're sprinkling it um, in the container. You do have to kind of reapply it after um, it rains. So there you go. To give you an idea, try not to spill them all. There we go. So little pellets, and I'm just going to go in there and shake it. So I want it on the soil because um, that way they, when they climb in, if they're in the container, then they eat it. And you would do this the same thing in a flower bed, right? So your hostas and anywhere you have snail and slug issues, this is great to use. I just keep a bag on it at me at all times. And um, prevention is better than being reactive because especially like in hostas, they, you know, they chew the holes, then it's a little more problematic to get pretty leaves again, as opposed to like a petunia. So anyway, I'm gonna do the other one and then we're gonna move on to the next container. Okay, so here we are at the outhouse, not really an outhouse, um, and the bridge. And this is kind of like container central in this area because I have got tons of different containers uh, for display and things um, for people to see. So there is a lot to go on in this area. So I wanna just kind of go through and talk about each of the different containers, what I'm gonna do, and then that way I can just go ahead and do it. And um, I think it'll go a little faster. So what we have first is um, <laughs> the grill. Old grill I recycled and I have two echinacea in here. This is the um, so Summer Song Fire Finch from Proven Winners. As you can see, it is a huge pollinator attractor. I have got um, honeybees all over it. Yes, there is a Japanese beetle. Ay, ay, ay. At this point, what I'm going to do is just flick him off um, because really the only way to get rid of them is. Um, with an insecticide and clearly the honeybees are all over it so i'm not going to do that and then we have the sombrero yellow again you can see there is damage that is probably from those pesky japanese beetles they have been eating on the petals i did have in this container you can see right here there's a blank spot these echinacea have been in this um, grill for this is probably their third year that they've been in here and I plant annuals in that little spot. I had put some campfire flame bidens in there because they were nice and bright and orange, right? Campfire, the grill. And um, they just did awful. It's not the plant's fault. It's that this grill has the echinacea have their roots are just everywhere. And so the Bidens basically got strangled. They didn't have enough food and sustenance to keep going. So that tells me um either i will probably do it i won't do it this fall i will do it next spring once i start to have some growth emerge i will take all of this out do a little root pruning on them and replant them maybe position them a little differently maybe you know both of them kind of in the back and that way i can have annuals in the front the reason is that I don't want to do it this fall is because, of course, Echinacea is, loves the hot weather and I need their roots to grow and develop and they will not do that when it's cold. So that's why I'm going to wait till the spring going into the hot season and they'll begin their active growth period. Gives you an idea on that and my reasoning for that. Um, down here I have a collection of guara. What I need to do is go ahead and trim that up. You'll notice it's really kind of tall and lanky and there's very few blooms on it. So I'm gonna cut those blooms back. My pentas, they're doing okay. They probably need a shot of liquid fertilizer. So I will do that for them for sure. And then in this next container, um, I have some super bells, diamond frost and a gorgeous um, foxglove that is in bloom and just doing beautiful. It is doing well and it looks like my fiber optic grass is dead. So I will pull that out and then I will fertilize this container as well so that my super bells will get nice and full and lush again. And then moving on to the wheelbarrow. Things that I need to do here. This is gonna be kind of, <laughs> this is gonna be my, my biggest maintenance work is this container right here. Because if you remember, I told you a couple of weeks ago that I think it was when we were in Maryland and it didn't get watered for a couple of days and it took a big hit 
I did lose some plants, so I'm gonna pull those out. Probably pop some caladiums in there for like fun color. I'm gonna trim up my alyssum because look, this is what I was talking about. If you notice down here at the bottom, there's tons of blooms. But up here at the top, there's very few. So if I trim this up some and give it a little bit of a haircut, just like I did with the jazzberry, then that will create new growth and they will be very happy. I'm gonna do some deadheading, maybe deadhead, pinch back the, um, what's that thing? Salvia, so that'll help flush out new growth. And then coming over here to these little collection of pots, I have some dahlias in here. This is the Hummingbird Falls salvia. That's a trailing salvia. It's not very many blooms. There's lots of buds on it. So I'll probably shoot that with some liquid fertilizer. And then the newly Noor coleus that I will trim back because even though like right now it's stunning, right? It is absolutely gorgeous and just being just a happy plant but I need to go ahead and deadhead it, trim it back a little bit so it keeps that nice thick habit to it and it doesn't get too tall and floppy. It will not be a severe prune, it will be a gentle prune. So that is what I am going to do. I am going to uh, just have some fun here in the shade, cooler weather. Brenna found a pine cone that she is very happy playing with. So she's out in the pines playing and I get to play in the garden. Fun times. my friends so we have got <laughs> Brenna found an empty pot I don't know if y'all can see that dear heavens at least she knows to get the empty ones and not the ones with plant in it so that's fine so I cleaned up um, this again had taken a really hard hit and had gotten extremely dry in high temperatures and everything suffered it got hit back um, the ageratums they just didn't make it so they got pulled out and then I filled in here in the middle with the it's the heart to heart caladium. This is radiance. And this is a sun or shade, which will be perfect here. And even though this container did not have pink in it, I think it's a nice fun pop. So it will grow and fill this in. I did add slow release fertilizer to this container and we're getting ready to water soluble fertilize. I get a lot of questions on how to do it. It's super simple once you understand how to do it so we are going to do that next and i think all of these containers are going to go ahead and get water soluble fertilizer because i don't know when the last time they did here comes jer on the bobcat he is uh up working so if you hear something that's him anyway okay let's get some fertilizer going all right so to do your water soluble fertilizer basically you need three things one 
you need a water, <laughs> you need a hose, right? So you need some sort of water source. You need to have a container that you know the measurement of. So whether it is a watering can and on the bottom, it tells me that there, this is a two gallon watering can. So I know this is two gallons. You can use a five gallon bucket. So if you're gonna do a good number, just get a five gallon bucket, you know it's five gallons, but you need to know the measurements of that container. And then you need a really good high quality water soluble fertilizer. We use proven winners with all of our plants out here. So this is what obviously I'm going to recommend to you is to get that. Now, most all, I think every water soluble container that, I mean, fertilizer that I've ever, nope, nope, nope. Brenna thinks she can have that. She cannot have the lid. Brenna, no, no. Leave it. She thought it was an empty pot. It's not. So you're gonna have inside, you're gonna have a measuring device. And in here you have lines. If you fill it all the way up, it is a tablespoon. And then the halfway kind of mark where the other line is, is a teaspoon. You can use this with house plants. It'll tell you how to use it with house plants. And that's what the teaspoon is for. And then you have two bags of the blue powder. Really simple. You're gonna do one scoop, one full scoop, per gallon. So I have a two gallon container. Therefore, I am going to do two scoops and I like to put the fertilizer in first before my water. That way, as the water is filling up, I can take the hose and uh, as I say, zhuzh it. So I'll kind of stir it as it's going. And um, that's just, that's as simple as that is as far as mixing it up. Now, how do you know that you need to apply your water soluble fertilizer? Um, some plants are heavier feeders than others. Your calabricoas, your petunias, extremely heavy feeders. Like you want to feed them quite often. Um, so they can be fed like every third watering. I'll even say like seven to 10 days. That kind of gives me an idea. When they start to be less green and less blooms, that's a real signal for you to um, feed them. Or if you've had, like what I've had, they took a big hit, they were under stress, they need food to be um, get their growing habits going again. Now, because this container is so incredibly large, I'm gonna go ahead and use all of the two gallons in this wheelbarrow depending on your size pot will depend on how much you're using. You're just gonna water like normal, right? So if you have a hanging basket or a container and just pretend that this is the hose and how much would you water it? And that's what you do. Um, if they're in the ground and you're hitting individual plants, I like to actually take, take out my, um, my little baggies of fertilizer and use the Proven Winners container. It makes a fantastic bucket. So I, I save all of my little, con, my little uh, water soluble containers and I use them for buckets for fertilizer. They are how I fill up my bird seed. Very, very versatile. So all I did was I simply watered it and it is fed. I will say this, I was thinking about this when I was um, whacking the heck out of that alyssum. If you're having like July 4th is just a, like really quick, right? It's just around the corner. If you're going to have a big gathering, a wedding, a, a birthday party, July 4th, whatever, um, you want to prune, trim your containers, hanging baskets, whatever, about two to three weeks before the event. You don't want it to people to come and go, oh yeah, you just pruned your container yesterday, didn't you? Because <laughs> that elicit, I mean, it, it's, it's whacked. It is not attractive at all. In two to three weeks, it will be completely flushed out, gorgeous and full. So give yourself that two to three week um, time period, that grace period, if you have a special event coming. Good tip to know.
correct, my friends. So um, our work on maintaining the containers is done for today. Um, just, you know, get out there, give them a little love. You'll know that when your containers need some attention and um, if you just follow those kind of tips that I showed you, the gentle pruning, um, the fertilizer, of course, regular water, maybe if something dies, it's okay. Just take it out and either let the other plants fill in or add another plant like I did here with the caladiums. But as always, I hope you have found this helpful and informative. You've learned something and you have been inspired to get out there in your garden and not be afraid and just have fun out there. Create something beautiful in your space. As always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.